My name's Bobby. And I'm Sarah. And this is BS with Bobby and Sarah. Welcome to episode nine. And this week, Sarah is going to tell us what BS stands for because I'm putting you on the spot. Hot on the spot. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to go with, um, it stands for birds singing because the, the, I've seen a lot, seen and heard a lot of the birds this week. And earlier you said, Bobby, that there was a bunch at your window and you were curious as to whether they were going to be picked up on the mic. And then I've been hearing them a lot, but at night, which is very strange in my opinion. Yes, I am like Snow White. Birds flock to, flock to me whenever I'm near windows. <laughs> um, I think birds, well, just... at, I did also have a, a period of time, like right outside my bedroom window, birds were chirping like well into the night and really too early. Uh, it's kind of them defending, being like, yeah, bitch, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I still have my eye on you, exactly. Robin. <laughs> uh, have we ever talked about how I took ornithology in college? I think we might have mentioned it, but I don't know if you've gone into it for any specific reason. Well, I mean, we probably have talked about it in the episode where I talked about how much of a fucking nerd I am. <laughs> <laughs> I Yeah, that, that topic comes up often. <laughs> unfortunately, it, for me, it does. I actually have three bird guidebooks right now on my bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds so nerdy <laughs> but i love it i absolutely love it and what's nerdy is that i still have like 80 bird songs on my <laughs> itunes because the the test was listening to these and then in the wild when we're walking around the whole class in the forest just walking around with our binoculars he'd be like oh what's that oh sound question that's question number four what bird is that call coming from? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is... So you had to wander the forest with binoculars and you had to identify these bird songs. Oh my goodness. That does sound like some... Like, are you secretly like 78 years old and <laughs> part of a, like an old person community? Uh, we are going to get back to that because I've got a lot to say about Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> about who? Antiques Roadshow, the oh. show on PBS. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, if I uh, got TV, I might watch that because I love when they get, when they bring in things that are worth so much money. But then you know what? I'd feel like so compelled to probably bring in like some really random stuff and be like, um, this is worth like $2. <laughs> and I'd be like, what? Are you sure it's not like 5000 Oh, But anyway. Well, I'm going to prey on that disability not okay not disability unability what's the opposite of an ability disability i think you're correct okay then i'm going to prey on your disability to judge how expensive things are because today in the game portion oh no i'm going to give you objects that have appeared on antiques roadshow <clears throat> and you're going to have to decide which one was appraised higher oh god okay um, man you are so lucky i don't have that show and i've Oh, man. Okay. Well, you know what? Honestly, I, I have just as good of chances of of winning this as I would if I was watching it, because that's just how bad I am at games. <laughs> it's so pathetic. Don't worry about that, though. But actually, one thing I am impressed with is you didn't know that I was going to throw what BS stood for this week. You didn't know I was going to throw that mm -hmm. over to you. No, I did not. And you came up you... with that pretty quickly, and I... <laughs> Honestly, I expected you to fail and have nothing ready. Oh, haha. -ha. <laughs> and so my backup was, I couldn't think of a good, well, this is a good B word. <laughs> this is a good B word to describe it, but I couldn't think of, I couldn't think of a word that meant what I wanted it to mean with a letter B. I even checked the source.com multiple times. <laughs> and the synonyms. But... What I was going to say BS stood for was beautiful Sarita because, Aww. because. That needs explanation? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, proceed. I want to see where this goes. <laughs> well, you have a lot to talk about this week. I do. So the B word I was looking for was something like, you know, totally mm. Sarah or like everything Sarah. Oh, okay. No, compl bastante. Completely, Sarah. Bastante, Sarah. Exactly. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I can see it. There's probably no B word for that. Thesaurus.com confirms that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to talk about this week? Let's dive right in. Well, speaking of your bird obsession, you nerd, mm-hmm. um, I wanted to talk about some obsessions because I've been obsessed with this with a couple of songs lately. Like, I'm usually the kind of person like after high school, the high school period where, you know, you listen to a song and you love it and you play it over and over. But then you learn quickly that those songs get really annoying to you, but not the whole the whole world hasn't caught up in how annoying that is anymore. OK, so they'll still play it over and over back in the day and on the radio and you would get even more sick of it. So I stopped listening to songs that I really, really liked over and over again, in like an obsessive manner. But for some reason, this past couple of weeks, I've been just like on a kick and one of them is from the eurovision contest and it's soldi the one from the italian i think they won second place right and how would you describe italy's song which they did finish in second place it's like italian yeah kind of like rap not but not like how we have rap these days that's like a little too crazy it's a little bit more like melodic and and steady it's got a great beat it's almost maybe like pop rap in a way it was like a slow, like slow ballad rapping. rapping. <laughs> ballad rapping, yes. And I'm still not sick of it. So I've experienced that with that song, Soldi. Um, and then High Horse by Casey Musgraves. I think that's how you say her name. Mm-hmm. And then these other two songs by, I think the name is Esquerdo, E S K E E R D O. I think from L.A. But anyway, yeah, the song is called Never Learned. And then the other one, I Know Somebody. Both of those songs, I've just been like on repeat. I mean, as long as you keep trucking on, just not binging on it till you're sick. What I'm trying to think of some <laughs> food I last binged on so much that I no longer want it. Ooh, yeah. What did I do that once? I think I did that with Madeline's ones. Those little like pastry, like those little tiny breads. Mm hmm. Like in the shape of, shape of a shell. Yeah. Ooh. Say that fast. Shape of a shell. Shape oh, of there a we shell. go. I got it. Never mind. <laughs> Not Sa- as hard as I thought it was. Sally's shape of yeah, a shell. Yeah, those things are delicious. Shape of the shell on the seashore. Shape of the shell on the seashore. <laughs> shape, of the cell, shape of the shell on the seashore. Seashore. She is sore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, naughty. You've always been a huge fan of music, so I could definitely see how you could get obsessed with music or a song or an artist or a style definitely oh definitely i mean when you when we did that episode and you discovered that song bobby and sarah i listened to that so many times it's just such a good cute song yes that was super bluegrass twangy Uh uh-huh song right yeah and i was like i love that song and it got me into that groove and i'm like oh yeah and what i love about like because i listen to music mostly on spotify is that you can specifically choose the song and then play like choose to play a radio from that song or from the artist so it'll give you like you know more stuff similar to that style and i'm like yeah yeah and it's great i guess pandora does that too do you have any other obsessions to talk about or was it mostly music oh yeah oh yeah um I, notebooks. I was been, I was looking for my notebook where I write my lyrics and stuff because Eric and I are going to be working on actually recording some songs this summer. Yes, that's right. And Ladies like, and gentlemen, she is not only a podcaster, a double, <laughs> a duo podcaster. She's also a song, songstress. <laughs> <She's> a, <laughs> yeah, I actually don't know if there's a difference between songwriter or lyricist because I feel like songwriter includes like the music and that you have to know notes. Like I know none of that stuff. So you love yourself some journals. Are we talking moleskins? I'm, Are we talking about little they usually, notepads like, like a police officer writes down on in the 1980s? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's that part of the obsession is because I have a very wide like of it. Like I will, I enjoy all kinds. You got spirals, moleskins, although I don't think I own any moleskin just maybe moleskin type like the ones you've gotten me are like perfect size that, that's because i'm a see. perfect gift giver <laughs> you are you are excellent as that at that and it's like people are are well i think you've known for a while but people that 
didn't know me forever um, are starting to kind of catch on. So I get them as gifts sometimes. And it's like, you would think I'd be like, oh, great, where am I going to put this? But no, it brings me so much joy every time. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking for a notebook with like my lyrics because I need to finish a bunch of them and I can't find it. So I was like, shit, that's the drawback. <laughs> that's where it is. <laughs> So now I have to like dig through my completely full up closet and like look through all my late my bag lady bags and <laughs> look for my notebook. Out of 10 notebooks, maybe three of them are specifically for just music and like the lyrics and stuff. And then one for one podcast and one for the other podcast. And then the other one's just random. You know, so it's like I, si- I assign them kind of like their duty or a general duty. Is that... I was going to say, is general duty what you call your your other podcast? <laughs> no, but I'm going to make a note because that would be a perfect little um, tag for it. So I can label it general <laughs> duty. <laughs> but I'm going to spell it D-O-O-Y because, you know, that's the joke. You got to. Yeah. And then along the same lines as notebooks, it's the pens. So notebooks and pens. Oh, my God. I could not have enough. I actually had to throw out like Mm, was it two or three i'm just gonna say two to be safe of like you know like when you get like a big pair of shoes um like a boots or something like that's a pretty big shoe box yes i do because i have very big feet (laughs) so maybe it was even one of the boxes that i stole from you or something ladies Uh, and gentlemen i have very big feet and you know what that means you know what that means big shoes and big shoe box (laughs) and just a giant socks <laughs> yes <laughs> we are so lame i'm so lame i'm sorry <laughs> but anyway yeah pens oh my god i had to throw out so many pens they were just dried out and crazy and i still have like a big bucket full of pens and pencils and then and those are just the ones that are like the ones that i kind of wanted to keep that still worked now i have a whole other like um gallon size ziploc bag mm, about three quarters full of pens that I, those are the ones I use the most, though. So I can't, I mean, but I'm ready. Like, I, I, there's just the other bucket is just sitting in my closet. So if anyone wants some pens from your real cool friends over here. She's got literal Ziploc bags full of pens, like a crazy homeless person to order. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I'll have to post pictures of it. Oh. All right. So you've mentioned obsession with music and pens and journals. Do you have any obsessions with anything bad like Ooh. hardcore <laughs> <laughs> what was i gonna say was... you were gonna say porn weren't you <laughs> i no. before i said hardcore i was thinking something else satanism or oh damn or oh i think i was gonna say like heroin hardcore dr- i was gonna say hardcore drugs no i'm lame that way Like, no no drugs. And it's because I know I have an obsessive personality. And I know that if I enjoyed any aspect of that, of those shenanigans, that I, there'd be no coming back, man. I would, I would dive deep. (laughs) At least you know it. And that's, you know, knowledge is half the battle. Is that what they say? I don't fucking know. I'm not one of those motivational speakers. (laughs) Go to some other podcast if you want to be inspired. I don't do that. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) So so how about you, Bobby? Do you have any obsessions? Because I'm an angel over here. You know what? I'm not sure. Maybe if I thought long and hard enough, but I guess it's a good thing that nothing pops up right away. Yeah. Although sometimes I wouldn't say I get obsessed. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I'll find a YouTube channel. Like, I don't even know what it's called because it's in Chinese characters. But there's like (laughs) these women on YouTube that they make like Chinese cooking videos. And they're, you know, living in rural China, you know, going to pick some fruit and veg in the garden. And they're cooking it using like old techniques. Mm Mm-hmm. I get pretty into that kind of stuff, but I, I don't really know if I'm obsessed with anything. Okay. What about like, would you consider that thing you said that you do with your hair, like when you're nervous or stressed out, oh. would you, would you consider that like an obsessive behavior? And what Sarah's talking about is, and honestly, 
it's like you're here in the room with me, even though you're not, because I am. I was literally doing it as you mentioned it. No, you were not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when my hair is is long, and if I'm bored or anxious, nervous, um, I will take a piece of hair from the back of my head and twirl it, and then I will wrap it around itself almost kind of like a, a bantu knot mm-hmm. kind of like jada pinkett smith in the matrix <laughs> okay <laughs> and then i'll put my finger through it and pull out so that the hair straight gets straightened out ouch and sometimes hair does come out with it and it's definitely a thing in my family that a lot of people in, in my family do Wait, it's to the point where Whoa. if i'm trying to concentrate on some work i'm doing or if i'm trying to meet a deadline and i get super anxious about it, i have to put a hat on <laughs> that's good else, that you have protection <laughs> also i'm gonna get, get a bald spot but no that is not an obsession that's more like a obsessive like a coping mechanism or something yeah i'm definitely not a, like obsessed with my hair my gorgeous mane full of hair yeah your golden locks or tan brown your brown locks <laughs> Yeah, you don't eat it or anything, so there's that. <laughs> no, I definitely do not eat my hair. Although, if I had long hair, um, I always thought that if I had long hair like a girl, I would like chew on my ponytail just to see what it tastes oh, like. It seems like it would be weird. You'd be one of those. I mean, I have long hair, and I, I, I don't enjoy chewing my hair. I like I I know what that sensation you're talking about. Well, you probably don't know. Have you ever chewed someone's hair? Even if, I mean, because it probably wasn't yours. But have you ever done it? Like, have you ever chewed someone's hair? I am not going to disclose that at this time. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've never asked a woman to chew their hair, and I'm sure none of them would have ever consented, because that's weird as fuck. <laughs> You'd never know. People are into some weird stuff. <laughs> that's true. Plus, I mean, they probably wouldn't feel it. Like, if the middle of the night, you just take the end tips and be like, arr, 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 just gnaw at it. You know what, Bobby? Maybe next time I'll just come over and be like, stick my hair, my ponytail in your mouth, and just be like, let's get this over with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I do not it. consent to. I don't consent to that. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's got to be both ways consensual. <laughs> yes. If any of you listeners have any obsessions, you know, go ahead and feel free to tweet us. We actually have a Twitter, even though I've only tweeted one thing. But our handle is BS with BS Podcast. That's our Twitter handle. Um, I think the only thing that I've ever tweeted out before. Yeah. And. No one has seen it, so I have no problem saying it again. Is why does anyone buy rubber bands when you get them free when you buy some broccoli? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but what if you need like seven rubber bands? You're not gonna go buy seven giant things of broccoli. You don't I even buy also... broccoli. You hate broccoli. <laughs> I do hate broccoli, but the times that or okay, you know what? They also come in asparagus. <laughs> but i i had asparagus this past week and i thought yes one more to add to my rubber band bag <laughs> and it's always the really thick one thick purple ones yes i actually really love their rubber bands because they are so great they have great strength textile ten ten style what's that word bobby tensile strength yes there you go yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so if you want such great short wonderings <laughs> like that follow us on twitter yes i actually kind of i forget twitter exists so i have to be on there more often and listen and read because yeah there are some hilarious things on there and it is i i think twitter is a really great platform for you because you have those great like one-liner type things i agree you want to hear another one yeah here's another thing i get confused between tornado watch and tornado warning Mm, that's not Which, a good thing. I know. It could be the literal difference between life and death. Because I'm thinking <laughs> Tornado Watch is like, watch out, here it fucking comes. <laughs> <laughs> watch it come through your window right now. <laughs> and then the other one, a Tornado Warning is like, careful, you know, it's the conditions. 
I'm warning you now, <laughs> something might happen. Yeah, get in your car, go home, you've got some time. <laughs> so I think I'm more confused about the fact that it's watch, like, watch out, or literal, watch the fuck out, it is coming for you. <laughs> yeah, that's quite the difference, like you said, uh, between life and death. So which one's which, Bobby? I want. I need to make sure that we leave this episode with you knowing the difference. <laughs> I believe watch is like watch the skies. It could happen. And warning is get the fuck in your cellar. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Yes. And that's Public exactly. service announcement. <laughs> Thanks for the PSA. <laughs> yeah. Have we gotten ever any tornadoes around here? I think so, right? Tornadoes can mostly happen anywhere. The two deadliest tornadoes in world history happened in Bangladesh. Um, is that India? Oh my god, you just offended our all our Bangladeshi and Indian <laughs> I'm listeners. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they are neighbors, but they're not the same place. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, good. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I just need to look at a map more often, dude. Like, whoa. There's another interesting tweet tidbit for you. But what else? What else you got for us this week? Because this is mostly about you, even though I keep butting in with stupid shit. No, but I, that's the best part. I swear. Okay. I hear you thought you wouldn't have anything. That is kind of our entire relationship. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. Speaking of social media, um, my brother-in-law came from a trip one. Uh, my my brother-in-law came from a trip a few weeks ago and he he's like i was at the bookstore you know at the airport and i saw this book and i thought of you and he like he just gave it to me i was like this random gift gift and it was so freaking cute and it's called um ooh, hold on a second let me get it is it called geography for dummies <laughs> you bastard <laughs> <laughs> Right, so the book is called Read This If You Want to Be Instagram Famous. And it's got a bunch of like um like rec- really good tips for social media specific to Instagram. Is it like to push up the tits and stick out the ass? <laughs> no, it's not that generic. It actually has like legit suggestions and stuff. Oh, and okay. and I was wondering, I was like, what I was like, do I give off an air that I want to be Instagram famous at all? Could just be because he knows that you're doing these podcasts and you're on Instagram. So that's true. I mean, either way, it was such a nice gesture, and I I really love the book because, like, how nice was that that he just randomly thought of me while seeing a book with the word famous in it? All right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I am thinking of going back on the dating scene, and it's oh man. What a drag. It really is. It is. Oh, I was talking to my friend in, when I was in Colorado a couple of weeks ago, and she really enjoys dating. Like, she has fun with it. And to me, it is just a stress and very stressful and full of anxiety. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. But it's like. Um, I w- n- not to call Christy a salute or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully she doesn't listen. If you do, hey, girl. <laughs> But what I'm trying to say is the more you do it, like the the less it'll be a thing, the less it'll be, you know, great expectations. Charles Dickens, horrible novel that I had to read in high school. It'll just be like, <laughs> really it was horrible. I haven't read it yet. I think it was horrible because I had to read literally like 50 pages a night because my freshman literature teacher was insane. Ooh, ouch. I think you just need to. I mean, it's easy. For me to say, because I've been shacked up for a while. <laughs> shacked up. <laughs> no big deal. Actually, no. I I must remain relatable and available Mysterious. to my followers. Yeah, so yeah. People will be like, "Oh, that Bobby." <laughs> it's a mystery, but you know, Sarah's free, so slide into those DMs. <laughs> what What should DM stand for? Like, do me? <sighs> no, gross. <laughs> no, I'm I'm something like dungeon master. Slide into her dungeon master now slide into her dirty maracas <laughs> <laughs> hashtag dirty maracas <laughs> <laughs> oh 
That is hilarious. So yeah, uh, just tag Dirty Dirty Maracas and I'll find you. <laughs> we'll set up a date. <laughs> and thus concludes dating relationship session with Bobby. That'll be $200 for those three minutes. Alrighty then. <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, you're good. You're worth it. And I wish you luck on this horrible, horrible journey that is dating in this day and age. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Call back to when you called me like a 78 year old man. <laughs> I I speak it the truth. <laughs> I fucking love Antiques Roadshow. And for those of you who don't know, it's on PBS. Oh, PBS. And it's a show where people bring stuff and then they have it appraised. It's like a big old fair. Bring whatever you have you think might be worth money. And at the Antiques Roadshow, they have all these appraisers from art, furniture, culture sports memorabilia and you'll learn about a product or you'll learn about an item and then you'll find out how much it's worth awesome so i love watching it i do feel like an 80 year old man i watch it on (laughs) dvr so i can fast forward through the things i don't care about oh because it's like oh god another bucolic painting of some trees (laughs) or if it's baseball memorabilia like i don't i really don't care about this baseball and who hit it and what number home run it was yeah (laughs) and then lots of times you'll get things like uh, a sword from someone's great grandpappy when he was a general in the civil war for the confederacy i'm like don't be so proud that your family was such a fan of slavery that they fought they would fight to the death to keep it yeah yeah (laughs) that's actually a really good tip to dvr because then you can forward through not just that, but the commercials as well. Well, because this is PBS, there's no commercials in the middle of the show. It's like <gasps> for five minutes at the end. Oh my God, that sounds wonderful. I love you, PBS. <laughs> Pretty fucking sweet. Um, some of the things that I love about the show is you always get these people who are you just know are disappointed in the value <laughs> that their item was appraised for. Yeah. Like they've, they just thought it was going to be so fucking valuable and then you can see like their face dropped and they have a very reserved reaction <laughs> where yeah. I would be like, oh, thank you. That like three grand for this. Oh, hell yeah. But they're like, oh, thank you. Good to know. <laughs> wow. The That's funny like thing more is, than they walked in with. Come on, people. Exactly. More often than not, I would say it's like the middle aged menopausal aged women <laughs> that have that. Let me speak to your manager look. <laughs> Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I have a few issues with some of the appraisers. And first off, the biggest bullshit that drives me insane is when they talk up the item. Like they get the person's hopes up. <gasps> they do that? Ooh. Well, okay. in I think it's there's a disconnect because you'll have these people who study furniture from pennsylvania and they're all about furniture and when they see stuff they'll be like i gotta tell you when i saw this come in today i started to tear up this is the oldest surviving one of these i've ever seen (laughs) it is from the late 1600s it's in pristine condition and i would conservatively value this today at and then like you're waiting with bated breath yeah one thousand to two thousand dollars and you're like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> they just acted I like was, it was the last piece of furniture on the planet. I was already thinking about the vacations I was taking. I was going to put Molly through college and grad school. <laughs> Molly. Yeah. Like, you motherfucking faith. <laughs> you motherfucker. Um, so that's, and if you watch an episode, sometimes you'll see this. The other gripe I have is the way that they will present the dollar value okay they'll once again talk up an item this is an oil painting from a famed renaissance dutch artist you know his works are in museums all over the world so i would value this piece at twenty five hundred dollars oh bastard. i'm like you <laughs> fucker everyone is thinking he's gonna say twenty five thousand exactly oh i'd get if that happened to me i'd give him are you fucking kidding me face are you fucking kidding me <laughs> oh my god that's such a good face <laughs> people need to see here from your are you fucking kidding me face <laughs> why the hell would you not just say 2500 you a-hole mm-hmm. 
Oh, this is this is PBS. It's not Bravo. We don't need that tacky ass drama for a ratings <laughs> boost. I mean, I don't know. Well, you know, eighty year olds can only handle so much. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. I, damn, I get worked up about this garbage, but I still love the show. <laughs> I swear, I am more like an eighty year old man than I care to admit. <laughs> I'm like getting up in the middle of the night five times to take a piss because my prostate is inflamed. <laughs> oh God! Oh no! <laughs> Kidding. That's a joke. Yo, you know that that bit of information you told me a while back about how um, the reason that the doctors tell tell the guys to turn their head and cough is yeah. so that they don't cough on the doctor. Yeah. I just blew some people's minds a while ago with that little bit of information. They're like, "What? Really?" They're like, well, I guess that makes sense. But they were also wondering why I knew that. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. of me. Like an 80-year-old, I will just coast up to some Antiques Roadshow with like a glass of prune juice. <laughs> Warmed up. And and my Werther's Original hard candy. <laughs> Do you know that? Or is that a white person thing? Oh, no, I know that. They're so good. My grandma used to have them. But she used to have more of the... the um, the ones that were in, like, the clear yellow cellophane? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that the w- only one I know. That was more... Yeah, that... Okay, cool, cool, cool. Freaking delicious. Um, but back to Antiques Roadshow. Some, I think what annoys me... I think what annoys me the most is when things I feel should be worth so mm-hmm. much are not. And I know it kind of depends on the appraiser. If you give three different appraisers an item you'd get three different appraisal values but like would they be Um, within the same range i mean who knows who's to say (laughs) and because it all depends on the market you know is there a market for people to buy this otherwise it's not going to be valued highly like are you talking about new york are you talking about denver (laughs) it is kind of depressing to see things like a ceramic statue from a pre-incan culture like from yeah. the literal year 400. Whoa. And it's only worth two grand. And then Ooh. immediately after that, you'll see a tea set and a teapot that looks like a duck <laughs> from not even 40 years ago. And it will be worth three times that price. Oh, but why? That is infuriating. Like I said, it's all about the market. Oh, so, oh, oh, oh. That's, that's the great the thing about the show. Lots of times you'll never actually know the price, and that is actually what today's game is about. Oh shit, I forgot about the game. I was over here all enjoying, and now I'm back to terror. (laughs) I have not. What's going to happen today is I'm going to give you two items that appeared on an episode of Antiques Roadshow. I'll probably give you a little bit of a description, Mm -hmm. give you an idea about it, and then I want you to tell me which one was valued at, which one was appraised at a higher value? Okay. All right. I'm feeling and, good about this, actually. Oh, good. Because that was only part one. Oh, shit. <laughs> then, <laughs> if you c- do pick the correct value, you're going to have to choose what it was evaluated for. So oh. this is like two tiers. Oh, no. Okay. Of okay. getting the proper question just to get the point and you may think that's fucked up but this is my game and i make the fucking rules (laughs) well i'm glad you read my mind there (laughs) yeah all right i've been forewarned i thought it it was just gonna be too easy to choose between a and b so Mm. i had to ramp it up yeah you ramped it the fuck up i have some sympathy for you but this (laughs) this ain't no charity (laughs) this ain't no pbs special (laughs) no uh Oh, and it would probably be better if this was visual so you could see things. Right. I think part of the game is going to be me describing things to you because, yes, this is only an audio format and it's not visual. So I'm going to do my best to describe things to you. Okay. Luckily, I have a great imagination. It is vivid AF. On our Instagram account, I think I am actually going to include a lot of pictures of these items today so if you are curious about what i'm describing and you want to play along go to the instagram and look at the pictures bs with bs podcast yeah play along please the first 
set of items, you need to decide which as a higher appraisal value is a Chinese Yijing clay teapot from 1840. It's a tiny teapot earthenware. It's a beautiful dark red color. Going up against it is whale eardrums from 1935. Whale Eardrums? Yes, they're two little sculptures. They look like gigantic kidney beans, but they are hollowed out, and they are from 1935. Which do you think had a higher appraisal value? Okay, so just to be sure, the whale eardrums are the eardrums of a whale? Literally, if you took an eardrum from a whale. Okay. Oh, gross. <laughs> the person's father-in-law was a physician for a whale company. And he acquired okay. them back in the back in the twenties and thirties when they were still harvesting whales. It was legal to take whatever part of the whale you wanted, and so they'd Whoa. keep it as a souvenir. Okay. So even though they're super rare, actually, I don't want to give that away. And the appraiser, mm -hmm. the appraiser does say that they are super rare. So they're super rare, but then again, like you were talking about earlier, like there's probably like no market for it like who the fuck is just gonna want some whale eardrums unless i'm still gonna say the clay teapot was was valued more because it's also older and it's a teapot people still use teapots and the answer is the clay teapot was despite being from 1840 it was only valued at 500 dollars. well oh shit the whale eardrums priced at 600 dollars Oh, by $100. Damn it. Question one, you're already wrong. Yeah. Question two, it is a set of jugs that look like you'd put moonshine in, but they were stoneware advertising jugs from 1900. It's just a company that says, like, Richard's a drug company, wholesale druggists. It literally says wholesale druggists. <laughs> okay. From 1900. They're advertising ju jugs from Prohibition time where you could only have alcohol for medicinal purposes. Oh, okay. So stoneware advertising stoneware moonshine jugs from 1900 or a letter from Civil War times. It's this person's great-great-grandfather, a letter that they wrote to his wife at the end of the Civil War. I don't know. America fucking loves their history, war history. Both of these are very historic times in our nation. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say the Civil War letter is the the more expensive one. That is correct. Yes. Thank you, America. Oh. To get the point, the proper point, can you tell me, was this Civil War letter from 1865 evaluated at 500 or 1500 I'm going to say 1500 You're wrong. It was only worth $500. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, so sorry. You get that question totally wrong. No point for you. Oh, so it, it voids the whole thing? I have to get them both right to be right? Yeah. Yeah, do. Oh, fuck. Oh, sorry about it. Okay. Question three. A figure of the Grinch from The Grinch Stole Christmas, that green beast he's in a santa suit and it's from 1966 or a tablecloth with people's autographs on it from 1960 the autographs are of people who sang at the grand old opera Ooh, okay they were probably like great musicians i'm i'm oh man but then the grinch like that's just so freaking random like why would that be there I will let you know that some of the signatures on the blanket were Loretta Lynn. <gasps> oh, shit. Okay. Ray Price and Richard Nixon. What? Okay. Okay. Then hands down the tablecloth. I'm going to... That, that was worth more. The tablecloth is only worth $600 to $800. And if I'm telling you the value, you know you got it wrong because you're not guessing the value. Oh, fuck. The MGM How? Grinch you... figure from 1966 was appraised at $5,000. Five thousand? Are you kidding me right now? I know. That's why I thought it was what? perfect. Sorry. So you are over three. Trickery of the utmost. Trickery and deceit. I am so deceited right now. Next. All right. A sweater and 
a pair of cleats from the Yankees in 1925. This guy's grandfather was named Wally Pip, and he played for the New York Yankees. It was a team sweater that they gave the members in 1921, and this guy played for the Yankees for 11 years. And why this guy's kind of a big deal, Wally Pip got injured one day, and he said, let the rookie play, and that rookie was famed baseball athlete Lou Gehrig. Oh, no way! So it's a sweater and cleats from 1925 from the Yankees, or an Ebenezer heart-shorn queen and high chest from 1740, and it was made in the Boston area. Um, if you think about it, if it is from 1740, it's older than fucking America. Whoa. <laughs> and it okay. is about eight feet tall and beautiful wood. It's got metal drawer pulls. It's in fantastic condition. So was it the Yankee sweater and cleat from 1925 or a chest of drawers taller than a normal human being and older than this goddamn country of ours? <laughs> Well, you mentioned the word Ebenezer. What does that mean? Ebenezer Hartshorn, I think, is just the company. Oh, okay. All right. The higher priced item was the chest. The chest from 1740 was at most $15,000. Shit, you're telling me the price. I am telling you the price. That means that sweater and cleats, if they wanted to insure it, they needed to insure it for $77,500. Oh, oh, whoa. That is some sports memorabilia and Americana. Yes, it is. And I thought it was a trick question because that was definitely what I thought would be valued more. But I was like, no, Bobby's all trickery and deceit and a tall ass chest. Like, (laughs) I'm so upset. I'm done spiraling. Let's move on to the next question. Question number five. A bowl from Hawaii carved out of wood from the year 1800. They would take the wood, they would put it in a swamp so it stays the shape, and then they'd put hot coals in it to scrape out all the wood. They believe it to be Milo wood. It's really rare to find early bowls like this, says the appraiser. Uh, compare that with the Colima pottery dog figure. It's a tiny little red statue figurine Okay. in the shape or an image of a dog from 200 BC to 200 AD. It's pre-Columbian art. Whoa. The statue figurine is made from pottery from the Colima culture, which is in Western Mexico. Okay. Colima. Yes, 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 yes. I've actually been there. It is a signature looking piece for the Colima culture. And the appraiser says you could not find a better one. Couldn't I find a better one? All right. A very rare bowl from Hawaii from 1800. Or a rare figurine from the Colima culture from, could be from literal year zero, 200 BC to 280. Um, my gut says Hawaiian bowl is the, mo- is the more expensive item. The Hawaiian bowl is only $5,500. God damn it. <laughs> the little pottery bright red fire engine dog is 10000 to 13000 Whoa. Actually, I'm looking at a picture of it right now. I wish you could see this because it kind of looks like it has an anus. It looks like it has a, <laughs> a little protrusion right where I it's at. His tail is up. So <laughs> So it's anatomically mm-hmm. correct? Or are they? I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Question six. Oh, this yeah. one's going to be a tough one for me. Um, <laughs> because it... For yes, you. Because it is from a tribe of... Native Americans from the west coast of British Columbia. This is an indigenous tribe from Vancouver Island, and they are known as Kwa 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 Kwa. Ha ha. <laughs> it is K W A K W A K A apostrophe W A K W. Whoa. So I apologize for mispronouncing that. Obviously, I have. It's a set of four masks. It's kind of the face that you see on totem poles yeah and it is four masks carved out of wood there's two different masks there there's three that are known as frontlet and they were used by chiefs 
in social ceremonies. The three masks represent a thunderbird, a beaver, and they are assuming that it's around the year 1900. Going up against 1936, Carl Kraft's Autumn Red Landscape Oil Painting. This would have been one of those things that I just blew past because I'm like, oh God, another painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was an artist in the Chicago area. He did many paintings. It's got brilliant colors. It's called Autumn Reds. He did work all over the Midwest. All right. What was the name again? I'm not going to tell you if you're going to fucking Google it. No, I'm not going to Google it. Okay. No, I want to win good and true. His name is Carl Kraft. Okay. Because the only reason I asked was because I was like, I'm wondering if I've, if I've seen that name. But I think I'm thinking Carl Wright. And he was the playing guy, wasn't he? Orville Wright? <laughs> no. okay so it's between it's masks what, and an oil correct, painting it is between this landscape oil painting of it's got trees it's a gentle stream there's a little mound in the background to me i think the native the indigenous mask would be worth more but i mean i feel like it's america so they'd probably value the painting more i'm gonna go with my principles on this one and go with the indigenous masks being worth more you are correct. Yes! Yes! Now, oh. don't get too excited. Because <laughs> now you got to tell me, are they yeah. valued at 50000 or 33000 Either way, these masks are like fucking... That's up there. That's the price of a car for these four masks that yes, are only 120 years old. Like my question but, is why aren't they given back to the to the tribes people or their descendants? That's a very good question. I wonder if after this episode those people would be like, uh, hey, can we get those back? <laughs> I've been looking for that. Um I'm gonna go with fifty. You are fucking correct. <gasps> you really? These oh my God. <laughs> four masks from the Kwa Kwa Kawa. <laughs> Kwa Kwa Kawaka masks from 1900 <laughs> are worth fifty to seventy thousand dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa! You guys, I just won one. <laughs> I'm not even excited winning the whole freaking game. Just winning the one freaking question. I was gonna say you're more impressed with the fact that you guessed <laughs> correctly between A and B than you are that the fact that these masks are. Just like 60 grand <laughs> such a little an bit <laughs> uncultured piece of shit <laughs> no bobby it's because i've lost so many games in a row like viciously like like people might actually question if i'm doing it on purpose but i am not i promise <laughs> that's that is you're right that is a lot for the masks i wonder if they're doing it like per mask no all together like as a group all together still a friggin' ton of money. This is a long fucking episode, but it's also good to hang out with you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, we're almost to the end. Don't worry. Question seven. Let's hope you get some momentum. <laughs> An autograph book from Disneyland in 1956. They had just opened the theme park. They got a lot of different signatures. The most valuable one is Walt Disney's autograph. <gasps> Ooh. His authentic autograph. Then he also has... Like people like the Mouseketeers, voice actors from the Disney Studios, to give you an idea. Yes. That is going up against a another painting, this time of Reverend Holyoke. He was the president of Harvard College, second longest ranking president of that school. The portrait was painted in 1749. 1749. That is a long ass time ago. But it's Walt Disney. First of all, can I interrupt and yeah. continue while you think of while I tell my little Disney story? I was so dumb as a kid that, you know, the very fanciful D Yes. Disney, it mm -hmm. like loops around. I didn't know it was a D. I thought it was like a backwards G with a line through it for some fucking reason. Yeah. For the longest time, Carla and I thought it was a G and we were just like, okay, that's weird. His name is Disney, but... We, we didn't kind of really put it together until later that it was just like, oh, it's just very, like you said, fancy D. <laughs> oh, thank God. I'm not the only idiot. No. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> but yeah, you're not the only idiot. <laughs> You've had enough time to think about it. A I have. Disney autograph book, including, including Walt Disney from 1956, 
or a painting from 1749 of like the first or sorry second dude that was president of harvard i would kind of want to say walt disney just because you know it's like walt disney and i'm a huge disney fan but i feel like appraisal wise the harvard university thing is a little bit more like historic value to it in a way so i'm gonna i'm gonna say that one's the more valuable piece of thing okay let me break this down you think people care more about this fucking old ass dude who is president (laughs) of harvard than walt disney (laughs) i don't think they should but (laughs) you are correct this painting is much more expensive Okay. okay. All right. Right. I can't get all the way inside. There's a second part to every answer. You still could get this wrong in my book. Okay. All right. Was this painting appraised at ninety thousand dollars or for two hundred thousand dollars? Oh my God! I'm gonna say ninety thousand dollars. Like that's two hundred is too much. That is correct. Yes. (laughs) I win two questions. We're gonna do nine questions because it is episode nine, and that's my favorite number oh okay okay that's that's cool all right then uh i had previously mentioned the civil war this person brought in some documents signed by robert e lee from 1840 this was before he became the general and head of the confederacy he was still part of the united states army at this time when he signed these uh, letters a lot of his documents during the war And after the war are fairly common, but before the war, which is what these are, he was still part of the U.S. government, the U.S. Army. They're much rarer. Going up against these documents, once again, I have a little statue figurine from the Mississippian culture. Okay. It's a tiny little statue from 900 to 1500. The Mississippian culture was a mound-building Native American civilization, flourished in like the Midwest, Eastern, and Southeast. So they literally build mounds, like, like outside? Yeah, like hobbit houses. Oh, ooh, okay, okay. So this, they believe, is a, a shaman's effigy. It's marvelous, it's completely intact, good quality, and it's under seven inches. What's an effigy? An effigy is just a sculpture or a model of a person. Oh, oh, okay, okay. They usually don't get beyond about seven inches, and quite often they're much smaller, but this one is just under seven inches, so it's rather big, so it's highly significant. That being said, Robert E. Lee documents from 1840 or a Mississippian culture little statue. I'm going to go with the letters from Robert E. Lee because it was before it was like the more significant stuff, so. And Americans love their Americana and their (laughs) war and history. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Am I right? true. Yes! Tell me, were the documents worth 14000 or 6000 Oh, boogaboo. 6000 The figurine was 6000 The documents were fourteen to 21000 God damn it. Let's go out on a high note. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the final question, question number nine. This is going to be really fucking hard because both of them are the almost... The same exact thing. Okay. Which is why I decided for it to be the final one that's really fucked up. (laughs) They are both big metal cast figures of a lobster. Of a lobster? The first one is a Meiji period iron spiny lobster. It's literally a lobster (laughs) made out of iron. The Meiji era was an era in Japanese history that was from 1868 to 1912. It's completely articulated. It's got movable parts. Whoa. So it basically looks like an actual lobster, and it's made out of iron. Okay. (laughs) That is so random, but it sounds kind of cool, actually. Is it random? Because the next one is a 19th century Japanese bronze (laughs) crayfish and a crayfish crawdad. No, this is actually a fucking lobster, too. (laughs) They think it's a prawn or a shrimp, even though it looks exactly like the other lobster. So, you basically have iron or bronze, 19th century, Meiji era. Which one do you think it is? Is there a size difference? Very good question. No, they are approximately the same size, which is to say life size for a lobster. (laughs) Alrighty. So, I think it it comes down to like bronze versus iron, right? I was going to say basically, 
you tell me bronze or you tell me iron because everything else seems to be about the same. Except the iron one is articulated and it moves, so it's basically like a giant metal doll for Japanese children to play with. <laughs> Probably not the actual usage, but yeah, don't drop be. it on your toe, children. Use it as a doorstop. Doorstop, yeah, or cool as paperweight. The iron one is more expensive. The iron one is more expensive. Sarah, look at you! All right. Bring on the second part. Now I want you to tell me if it was worth $30,000 or $7,000. Donna Rooney's, I'm going to go with thirty. It feels like something crazy. Like, why a lobster? I mean, it's just a metal lobster that moves around and it's from not okay. that long ago. Okay, then can I change it to seven? Nope, because you were actually correct. It was $30,000 <laughs> for this iron lobster from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome i'm so glad you didn't let me change it <laughs> i mean it was kind of a bullshit question in the first place it's basically <laughs> the same item except for different metal but i'm so proud of you thank you what is the i'm curious now what the price is for the bronze one is the very bronze close? one ended up being three thousand to five thousand. Oh, that's a huge difference holy m- whoa Yep, I think a lot of it has to do with the articulation. The bronze oh. one does seem like it's frozen in time, and then the metal one, you can actually play and move the legs like a fucking creepy little alien. That is really cool. Congratulations, you got three out of nine questions right, which is actually better than I thought you would do. <laughs> I hope you had fun. Everyone remember to check out our Instagram, BS with bs podcast so you can check out pictures of some of these things i was talking about part of the game that i wanted to make it was difficult was you not being able to see what i was talking about yeah that was actually pretty challenging and but fun at the same time i felt like like a very smart 80 year old (laughs) (laughs) just for like the imagination part of it and if you two want to discuss antiques roadshow with me at any time please just email me BS with BS podcast at gmail.com. If you want to talk about that, talk about your obsessions. Are you obsessed with Antiques Roadshow? Are you obsessed with <laughs> yeah, feet? Yeah, you obsessed with? Ew. You got a foot fetish. You can tell me about it. I won't care. I probably won't like read that entire email, but whatever. <laughs> Just like the tag, the, the subject line, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, eh, I've had enough, but thank you for your input. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll read them. You don't have to worry about that. Tell a friend. Hashtag birth that info. If you enjoyed listening to us, tell someone else. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time. My name's Bobby. And I'm Sarah. And this has been some BS.